Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi, uh, live from quarantine, not actually live. We're, this is pre-recorded. Um, you know me, just doing my thing. Uh, oh, as, we, as with me always, I got Chris Cheney. What's up, guys? And I got Lawrence Deloach making a face because hey, he knows buddy. I'm the best opener of the show. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing? What's up, man? I'm doing great. What about you? I'm doing great. I'm happy. I got my uh, USPS shirt on. Support the USPS, baby. Keep them alive. Keep funding the USPS. Do not defund the U- USPS. Yeah. yeah, I don't want FedEx dealing with my shit. That's facts, <laughs> man. Fucking make sure you get your ballots and vote. Yeah. Don't let fucking, you know, who try to ruin the election. Yeah, yeah. Kanye. <laughs> Yeah, but like if if the USPS does go down, I'm telling everybody now you're gonna want to invest in those mailman jackets because those are gonna be fucking fuego expensive vintage items on grail in like two months. No, disagree. I'm not gonna disagree with you. Uh, it is one of the flyer uh, blue collar jackets for sure. Exactly. This uh, somebody's gonna take it and just make it hype. It's going. It's gonna be a thing. I'm telling you, for sure. That's the low key flex. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I'm a little crazy right now and that's because I've got I've got McDonald's on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> loving it. I'm loving it. I'm uh, loving it. You, you I care about this. Uh what do so, you have on your mind about McDonald's though? Talk to us. Motherfucker, they did it. They, Travis Scott did it. He said he said, "You know what? I grew up like in, in McDonald's. God damn it, I'm going to have my own meal." Loving it. It's he, beautiful. It took Travis Scott somehow uh, to put bacon on a burger at McDonald's. <laughs> on a quarter pounder. Bro, That's they crazy. they never had a bacon sandwich. There was never bacon on any of their shit, but they That's had to go through. Name a sandwich. The bacon to, like, Big Mac. They did it for like a limited time. Bro, you know, you had to go like put bacon on that. No, there was a bacon Big Mac. It was last year. Bro, don't do this to me. I work right next to a McDonald's. I know. I'm sure, look, I'm sure, I'm sure there's been bacon on a, a McDonald's sandwich. Like, this, Travis is not the – McDonald's <laughs> is so fucking old. Like, I never have Apple, seen – Yo, I, but my man put Applewood bacon on there. When you see <laughs> Applewood bacon on a, on a McDonald's burger. I, I think what makes the sandwich uh, – well, let's – you know, for, let's, for the listeners, basically, you know, Travis Scott got a, a sandwich from McDonald's. It's uh, – <laughs> He got a sandwich. Look at the way you're describing things, bro. He got a sandwich. Bro, he got, he got a, a meal. Sandwich. He got a bro, he got his own Sprite. He got his own medium <laughs> fry. Uh, oh, this shit is crazy. So what is it? It's uh, it has lettuce on. It. I think that's what like is one of the also also uh, different yeah. things too. So uh, it's, it's bacon and lettuce. <laughs> it's a classic, man. This is iconic. Yo, this is some regular ass shit. <laughs> This is the this is the <laughs> this is the backward swoosh of McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> putting lettuce and bacon on a no. They counter. it's they flip the nine upside down to a six. You see how he keeps turning things? He just rotates shit, and it's that's amazing. what he does at every brand he does. So guys, are you guys gonna have the Travis Scott burger on September eighth when it releases at McDonald's? Hell, hell no. Yeah. Hell fucking hell, yeah. Look, you are in an age appropriate where you could go do this ironically, and it's fine. No, I'm not doing it ironically. I'm doing it seriously. You're seriously ironic. I, I can see the, your face nah. right now. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Travis Scott, his grip on fucking the youth and, like, it's so real that, you know, he's going to make – he's going to have people going to McDonald's that normally wouldn't eat McDonald's, <laughs> and it's amazing. Yes. Does, doesn't it come with a toy or something when people talk about it? Because I, I heard there was rumors there was, of some there type was of a apparel. There's speculation about a, to- uh, about a toy. There's speculation about a toy. Uh, there were, like, leaks of, like, images, but they were, like, they turned out to just be fan stuff that somebody made. It was supposed to be, like, gotcha. a four-inch figure. And then the, the big, the hype item, the hypest item of all is the retail shirt. That says <laughs> the, the Cactus Jack fucking McDonald's crew shirt. It's it's so du- it's All so right. absurd. It is so absurd. All right, so you guys ripped me a new one when I was talking about how this tenant shit, this movie thing that he's doing was so dumb. Now right. this happens. You guys can't tell me that like. All right, so this is genius. <laughs> it's it's not genius. It is. <laughs> People are gonna be selling bags of brown bags. 
because they have a special Cactus Jack logo on them. <laughs> so this is what we have on the screen right now. This is the official thing on McDonald's website. Um, right. So it breaks down the meal. Quarter pound with trees, Travis style, which is apparently just lettuce and bacon. Lettuce a and medium bacon. fry, barbecue sauce, and Gotta Sprite. barbecue. If you know, you know. That's the, that's the, the tagline for the, for the medium fries and a barbecue sauce. If you know, you know. I mean, this does sort of... I, he keeps cementing himself in new ways that I haven't been able to imagine. He, he got Bro, a that's meal. what I'm saying, dude. He's I'm, on another level. I'm going to say this. This is and, and what I've read, and, and we're, we're not going to spend all day on this, but Travis Scott, <laughs> he's not the first celebrity to close Tommy down, obviously, but he's the first to appear on the menu since Michael Jordan did in 1992. So if, if, you, if you guys don't understand, like, like, goddamn. Like, I didn't know like, that. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, that is insane. I and mean, we we've talked about the Travis Reach, uh, you know. Obviously, I you know I compare him to you know mid two thousands, you know Kanye West in terms of their imprint on on streetwear and in kids, just fashion in general, fashion, just culture, yeah. all culture. that shit. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll be honest. I, I think that uh, a lot of people are you know when you know it's a it's an interesting uh, collaboration or you know people two brands coming together. Uh, people are obviously upset because once again, you know, people say, "Oh, this guy who is so, so has such a, a big reach is promoting McDonald's," which a lot of people are not, you know, into because it promotes or quote unquote, you know, childhood obesity. And these and the kids who yeah. love Trav, you know, they're gonna want a McDonald's meal. Right. Um, I will say, and I and I, I and me as a kid, you know, I can remember when you know the Olympics happened and you know the Dream Team, and you know, I was a a baby but i remember begging my mom for you know triple cheeseburgers so i can collect the mcdonald's cups you know in 92 and i remember that vividly and i remember going from you know i think uh, a slender kid to that summer gaining a lot of pounds <laughs> because i kept begging my mom to go to mcdonald's so i i get both aspects um but it's like i said it's just the it's it's fucking goes to show you that how big this guy's reach is yeah i didn't think of the cups yeah, they, they used to do Dream Team Cups. Yeah. Uh, so Michael, Larry, Magic, all those guys, you know, would be on cups and shit. But um, Crazy. Uh, let's, you know, I, I, we're not, like I said, we're not going to spend all day on this because our <laughs> listeners want to hear other shit besides uh, no. Trav and McDonald's. <laughs> Trust but, me, they want to hear about this for three hours. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. I don't. I got other shit to talk about this week. Lawrence uh, doesn't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> all right. No, but I, I was going to ask you guys, because, you know, this is, uh, if you guys obviously could create your own burger, because what this burger sounds like, it's just an additional, it's just adding bacon, I believe, and lettuce or something like that. Yeah. Um, what would you, what kind of burger would you create? So, I've actually never had a burger from McDonald's. I've only had the chicken oh. variety. Mm -hmm. Weird. And they made, a while ago, this thing called Southern Style Chicken. I know. It, was, it was just like it was a Popeye sandwich. It was the KFC or whatever. All I would do with that is I would just put Thousand Island dressing on it instead of uh, the whatever the secret sauce is. That'd be like my burger. Hell yeah. I would. Do I think I think I'm oh, sorry. I think I think what you're talking about. It was right before Chick-fil-A invaded New York City. Yes, probably they was. Did, they did a Southern style and Chick-fil-A has the actual yes. Southern yes. style. And, and then New York, it kind of was like, Ugh, who cares? We don't want McDonald's shit. But uh Luke, what would you do? Oh, I would do a, a very Asian burger. I would do a, <laughs> I would do a ramen ramen bun. <laughs> okay. Ramen bun to begin with. This from um, McDonald's Tokyo or McDonald's? This is, <laughs> no, this is a this is a triple label. This is a Luke Trevisi uh, uh, Nissin uh, Top Ramen and uh, and McDonald's. Cola. Oh wow! This wow! Is, I'm ambitious. So. Uh, <laughs> and then I would do a burger with white cheddar and then the McDonald's Szechuan sauce because I'm fucking weird. Okay. Uh, I, I too, I, I rarely eat McDonald's hamburgers. Like I haven't had, you know, a McDonald's burger in years. Uh, I would eat like the double cheeseburgers and shit, you know, like when I was drunk, uh, oh, yeah, when I was drunk, I would definitely have like a cheeseburger or double cheeseburger and shit. Um, I, I'm kind of like on Chris's side. I would definitely go for like some type of chicken sandwich. Uh, it would be probably like, you know, fried chicken, uh, you know, you have like some type of cheddar, cheese. Uh, it would definitely have bacon on it. With a side of kombucha. No. <laughs> Yo, some McBucha? With Yo. McBucha? With I don't Lawrence think we, McBucha? 
I don't think McDonald's and kombucha will go hand in hand. Uh, I don't know, man. Just shoot for the stars. I made a ramen burger. <laughs> shoot for the stars and for the moon. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, all right. So if we're gonna say then the drink would be a, a your flavor of kombucha, but it definitely would be like I said, chicken, cheddar, uh, bacon, uh, lettuce, and then some type of uh, mixture of barbecue hot and ketchup. You swirl that in and and oh, sandwich. some katsu sauce. Ooh, yeah, got, got a little heat. So. Thick katsu sandwich. That's what you're going for, Al. I like, I like that. I like. That's you a know, good move. One thought about the kombucha, though, because you would have to have it like a syrup form, so it would have to be a machine. But, Lawrence, you'd be disappointed <laughs> every time because every machine in there is always broken. <laughs> it's uh, just a broken-ass no, kombucha machine. Oh, Larry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we can't give you the Lawrence meal. The kombucha machine is broken. <laughs> Hilarious, man. <laughs> So, I mean, what I'm more, I'm, I'll say this, I'm more excited for the spicy nuggets, which comes out, I believe. On, Ooh, like, he's trying to kill you. Later. Yeah, they're trying, they're trying to fucking kill. I, I might just, if the trap burger is there, you know, after, you know, the spicy nuggets drop, I might just do a one <laughs> sodium filled meal and then not eat there again. So treat myself. I like it. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so. We saw we saw Trav um, with the McDonald's uh, collab. Uh, we also saw him. He he's the go-to guy. It seems like when you want to debut or uh, some sneakers on foot with a celebrity imprint. imprint. And we saw him uh, this weekend uh, wearing the uh, the Jordan Fragment Threes that are scheduled to release in a couple of weeks. Seventeenth, oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the shoe was. This is this is a thing people do, and this is what I. They see the fucking pictures and then they're like, "Oh, these are gross. These are disgusting. Fuck it. Plain. They're fake fucking Concord threes. Yuck. Hiroshi shit. No. Trash. And then when they actually release and see, and then people are like, oh my gosh. Um, we've said this before on the podcast. This falls right under his alley of basic shit, but with yep. high quality. That's, yep. we, that's what he does. Mm-hmm. He's, one of, he's top five. Dead or alive, period. That whole yes. imprint is crazy. And I, bro, I want these so bad. I've never yeah, wanted a are, Jordan more than these, these fucking nice. Fragment 3s. And you like Jordan 3s to begin with, so this is, this is a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. 3 is probably like one of, you know, the 1, 3, and 11 are probably like within my scope of like the 3. We've discussed it before, but these, bro, yeah. fucking, they are, this is the cleanest 3, I think, period. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've been, uh... I, at first, I was I was a little on the uh, uh, on the fence about this, but at first, like, what sold me was the fragment logo on the back, and then you just keep looking at it, and yeah, it's just clean. I do want to make it one nerdy observation. It's a just design observation. Um, with a lot of fragment stuff, he kind of had like that first uh, Virgil lockup, I'll call it, where he like had the Helvetica type on stuff. It was very simple. I did notice he switched from Helvetica, and I'm gonna guess. I know this is super nerdy. But I want to, I want to like, this is good to log and pay attention to because I he probably did it because all his shit was already Helvetica and then Virgil took it. So that font he's using is Futura, which is like the, you know, Supreme, Louis, all these different fonts. Is, it, that, it's that one, but he changed it. So that's what that little detail is right there is revealing that I think that he's using Futura now. On the bottom right? Yeah. On the uh, middle? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. As a, uh, a proud owner of Fragment Ones, uh, these are uh obviously then to me they're not on the same level as the ones but they are uh, an addition that i would love to uh add to my collection uh i, I like i said i think they're, they're very clean they um i don't they're know beautiful. I just, they're yeah. you know they, i don't know i just like i said i think it's a it's it's a fragment shoe and i think if you know anything about fragment a lot of times the designs are pretty basic but the quality, they, they definitely don't skimp on the quality. And I think that's what will, you know, people who, who actually wear the shoes will definitely uh, see with those, with the kicks. So hopefully. Oh, this has a translucent back too? Yeah. yeah. So it, it has the, that same thing where, I mean, bro, the second we saw them, them first translucent ones, like you knew this was going to be the thing. This was the, their like collab double label, like yeah. reveal. You know what I mean? Because like everyone wants the jump man, but then yeah. everyone wants to also put their branding on the heel. You know right. what I mean? So, like, this is the perfect way to do it, unfortunately. Absolutely. I mean, I'd rather, like, you know, have Nike, like, let them, like, give the branding to someone else, but, like, whatever. Right. Yeah, I still so, like it. Yeah. I like them a lot, man. I'm, like I said, uh, retail at $200. Uh, 
I mean, if I, I, I can go on for days about stories I had, like getting the fragment ones. Uh, obviously, we're in a different time frame now in terms of securing shoes. So, you know, these are going to be straight up. You click a button and you enter a raffle and, and there you go. Whereas, you know, fragment ones, we got stories, man, in terms yeah. of how we, how we secured the sneakers. So it's a much different time and a much different uh, re- release availability. <laughs> that is correct. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Uh, we also not only did we see the fragment threes, but we also saw the uh, the fragment thirty fives. Yes, yeah, uh, so, and we, we've seen these shoes for years. The Reebok made these in the nineties a couple different times. <laughs> they really did. Do tell, Chris. Do tell. So, <laughs> no, because uh, before we were talking, and as the Bach boy of the podcast, uh, you brought it up actually, Al. You were like, "Yeah, these are Reeboks," and then I grabbed first the I think these are the Emmett Smiths. These are basically the the same sort of um yeah same design sim- same like design crazy. sort of uh backbone i mean obviously these are different in many different ways but like that that swirl going across the the mid right there i mean that's basically that and then also you can't the shack gnosis is basically the same thing too right yeah. this is just like the little jordan flare on it um i mean there's much more going on as far as the construction with these shoes but yeah, they're, I mean, these are cool. These are fine. I like yeah. the, the Fragment version better than any of the other models I've seen. Yeah, these, well, these are nice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad if, uh, if I, I got these, if I couldn't get the threes. No, I'd be mad. I, you know, you guys could be mad. I'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, these, these don't strike me as, uh, you know, these strike me as basketball sneakers completely. Uh, you know, we, there were some Fragment uh, 34s that, that he was wearing, I believe, and they were amazing. And then the first uh, fragment three sample that we saw with him, they were the royal, like uh, the royal yeah, blue, the blue. Yeah. the blue. I thought Which, those were amazing. I one day I hope to get to speak with him, and I want to know when like he decides not to use blue and when to use blue. Because as I, before I've said this, like one of my, one of the reasons why I admired him so much is admire currently is that like he can just make shit blue, put his logo on it, and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Right? But like with something like that, that three, you would think like. Oh yeah, green elephant or no, uh, scream. Excuse me, blue elephant print. Done. There you go. Boom. It's perfect. But then right. he went with the clean black, no texture. It's like, what made you do that versus anything else? So one day I hope to have like a full discussion with him. Yes. Yeah, I fucks with I fucks with uh, Hiroshi, man. Let's uh, Fuji Rara. <laughs> yes. Fuji Rara. <laughs> Fuji. Rara. <laughs> he can't say W's. You can't say W. Rara. 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 Yo, say Waluigi. Waluigi. See, how can you do that? Oh, it's when it's in the middle of the word. It's a W. It's the A R. It's the R. Uji Wara. Warovsky. It's like that weird, like. Warovsky. It's W and R next to each other. He can't do it. Swarovski. Oh, that's so funny. Fuck. So we got uh we got fragments coming out. We got fucking Trav McDonald's collab. Hell we yeah. got uh we got a big story out of Adidas. Uh, John Wexler uh, is leaving to yeah. a different. Uh, He's going to Shopify because Luke last week uh, blew their cover, and he has <laughs> to go fix all the damage that Luke caused by letting yeah. people figure out how to check out faster. Which I also have an announcement to make. Uh, Shopify found out I could read two lines of code, and they were like, you can have a job here. So I'm leaving the podcast. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations, bro. Um, yeah, happy. so uh, for those who don't know who Wex is, Wex is sort of the reason why uh, Adidas has any rappers associated with it. So not only Kanye is there because of him, um, but Pharrell and Push. I know those are kind of all the same camp of music. They're all friendly, but John is sort of the reason why they're all there. And so for the past, I, want, I think 15 years-ish, around there, he's been the VP of uh, Yeezy. Well, not the whole time, but he's re- leaving his uh, – GM of Yeezy, but he was at Adidas for like 15 years, like something crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Long time. But yeah, he's leaving and going to uh, Shopify. And uh, I got to tell you guys, it's not looking really good for Adidas. I think they've, other than like 350s and other Yeezys selling, like it's not really looking that good for them. Mm-hmm. They've been sort of on a steady decline 
for a while now, if you exclude the easy shit. I mean, like, probably their peak was, what, 15, 16, 2016? I was going to say 14, 15, yeah, 16. Around there. Yeah, something around there. Like, I think, like, once Adidas got the Bape NMDs, it just was a slow, yeah. steady decline. Because that's you know, the last thing I really remember. What do you got, Al? I, I was going to say, I remember, I remember actually being out there on green – uh, trying to get those bait NMDs. This is Thanksgiving, I believe, 2016. Yeah. And, man, I mean, those almost, like, dudes is ready to die for those shits. And I think <laughs> after that, I think, like you said, after that release, I think it kind of it kind of tailed off. I mean, the Ultra Boost hype was, we talked about this before. Bro, I mean, you, that shit was fucking huge. Yeah. Ultra Boost NMD. I had to slow down just to say, I don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. NMDs, uh, Ultra Boost, you know, because even now, you know, a lot of the technology, like you said, it's, it's kind of, with the exception of, like, Yeezy, I mean, I'm sure, you know, obviously they're still doing well, but it's, the hype is gone out the window, man. Yeah. yeah, man, it's like, other than Superstars, what, Forums, Stan Smith's, like, the core stuff, they're, like, their Air Force One, their Dunks and that mm-hmm. kind of shit. Yeah. I really, like, no one really buys Adidas anymore. I, I, I personally... I had this realization maybe the other day. I'm like, oh, Reebok is starting to do better than Adidas. Yeah. Uh, See my face? No. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not going to say that they're, like, getting above them. But as far as what I'm – like, a lot of the hype that I'm – like, because even – all right, so, look, side note, tangent. Like, Reebok's starting to experiment again, and they got those uh-huh. beaknicks that are coming back out. Right. Like those sandals, those like hippie sandal type things. A lot okay. of people have been like, yo, these are kind of the shit. And I feel like that, I, when I noticed how many people cared about those shoes versus like other things in the skate, I'm like, oh, no one's been talking about Adidas for a while. People are flipping out over Reebok, like flip flop sandals. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, and Harden had those, uh, those Reebok questions, which were nice. Yeah, which is not an Adidas. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like the decline of Adidas is slow but and, steady. And they and got that mm-hmm. hot, hot, Reebok just got that hot, hot Minions deal. But don't you, yo, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, the Minion, the movie, is doing like a Pump Fury. and I They're doing a Pump it. Fury and the eye is like the, the yeah, pump. Yeah, I got a like, gotta, gotta text from Luke it's like, fun. yo, is this your god? <laughs> is this your king? I didn't say your god. Is this your king? I hate you so much. And uh, and you know, like, I, listen, I'm joking about it. Like, obviously, I, I rib you about it, but still, it's like they're they're getting you know very popular items as collabs still. Like, they're still relevant. True. No, it's true. You know? I'm excited. Uh, I mean, not excited, but I think um, I, it's it is kind of crazy that we we still we you know certain Yeezys we still kind of you know get excited for it, and they still they do well. Yeah. But I mean, when it comes to other things, because I, like you said, I remember Ultra Boost, you not being able to walk in and get a pair. Like you had to literally, yeah. you know, do yeah. some work. I, I had some, I had some Ultra Boost from that era. And I remember my boy was hitting me up like, yo, L, you want a pair of Ultra Boost? They about to sell out. You know, and now it's like you walk in and you're like, oh, I can get an Ultra Boost for, <laughs> on a discount or like I can get, you know. It's Bro, you true. can get two for one. What are you talking? <laughs> they they throw them at you on the way out. They're going to take some boost. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a, Would you like totally, some boost technology? Uh, totally uh yeah totally different man like i said the hype and things uh you know uh speaking of um people leaving brands uh neymar uh is leaving nike to go to puma yeah Yeah. um which is uh very interesting just because of who uh i I, i'm not a soccer guy right but um I remember at Sprayground, we tried to do some work with him, but he, he like, didn't work out just because I think he – I didn't realize, like, his person. Like, he is such a big international star. Right. Because us in America, we forget that, like, soccer is, like, like a, a sport everywhere else. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, the MLS yep. here isn't really treated how it probably should be. We're mostly watching football and basketball. But him going to Puma is actually, like, a huge deal based on that fact alone. Like, you leave what – Mostly yeah. regarded as like the biggest sneaker company to go to Puma, which I is probably more uh, soccer forward or football forward, depending on where you're talking about. But he yeah. had like a 10 year contract, but put together, like he has more followers than most of these sneaker brands total. Yeah, that's crazy. When you told me that I was like, I didn't know that at all. That's nuts to me. Yeah. Like when you are bigger than the deal, like because yeah. it's not like he's choosing 
Puma. Puma didn't like ask him. He's like, okay, I'll go to Puma. Like when you're that big, you don't just like, you get right. the deal you want. And he chose that. Yeah. They probably, they probably offered him a lot of money. Oh yeah. I mean, they, they probably, yeah. like probably some ownership, you know, like there's, there's a lot of money being thrown at that man. I think we're going to get like six pairs. We're six different Neymars coming out. Um, it Neymar seems like, um, that. It seems like Puma's made a concentrated effort into basketball, which we've mm -hmm. known based on like with their Rock Nation deal and like that whole Jay Z like trying to you know the athlete shit, um, golf and soccer. Yeah, mm -hmm. which are interesting sports to target. I mean, for Puma, soccer makes sense, but the golf shit is interesting, and then the basketball shit is even more interesting, especially with those like Jay Coles and stuff coming out. But um, no, shout out to him. Congrats for you know, I guess leaving the the deal. He had like a ten year deal. That was a long ass deal. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Like I said, it's probably a lot of money to leave that. Oh yeah, we definitely. Like I said, they threw bags at him, man. Good for they, him. Speaking of real quick, speaking of bags, man, getting thrown, man, at, at dudes. Uh, NFL season starting uh, Thursday, uh, mm -hmm. and we saw how Patrick Mahomes got fucking paid. Right, we saw Yo, that paid, paid, yeah. and uh, and lo and behold, uh, Deshaun Watson. The uh, amazing quarterback from the Houston Texans got paid too. Uh, a four-year extension, uh, averaged around thirty-nine million dollars a season, uh, with a twenty-seven million dollars signing bonus. And I, for one, am happy for the kid uh, because you know he's talented. Um, also, if you know anything about football, Dak Prescott is the Cowboys quarterback, and he's like, I got to get paid, man, and. And I'm just, I, bro, I'm just happy to see these, these young black quarterbacks get their money, man. Yeah. I'm like, really, for, for a, a position that, guys, when we were, you know, obviously, Luke, you were born a little bit later than, you know, Chris and I. But, I mean, black dudes were not supposed to play the quarterback. They taught, like, they, they looked and they said, this is not a black position. Yeah. They were and like, let's keep this one for the whites, you know? Let's keep it for the white guys, man. Let's keep it for, you know, the – the Jeff George, the John Elways, the, you know, the Joe Montana's, you know, and a black quarterback, they had the fucking, okay, Chris. Put your, uh, put your, put your yeah, fist down, please. Don't do that again. Don't do that again. Put your fist down. Don't, don't Sorry. do that, man. Don't. Sorry. Oh, God. But, uh, and, and to see these young black quarterbacks get their fucking money, like Kyler Murray is going to get paid from that, from the Arizona Cardinals. Dak's got to get his money. Mahomes is a fucking owner, at, uh, owner of the Kansas City uh, Royals at this point and oh, yeah. half a billion dollar superstar. I'm I'm really happy to see that. So I just you know, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, no, but, it's great. It's just yeah. unfortunate that this season is going to be. It is what it is. You know, it's like a horrible year to get like such improvement. But it is setting a standard for everyone to follow, which is great. Sort right. of the same way that you know the highest deal, and, and this is with any job. This is with any position anywhere. Like you know, mm -hmm. once you set a new precedent. That means everyone gets to eat better down the line. Yes. So, like, that Mahomes deal is huge in general. So, that's just great. It's just unfortunate it's, like, the worst year in history. <laughs> I mean, he's still going to get his money. So yeah, he's I still mean, getting it. Get his money. It would be the best year for him. So Chris, you know. put your fist down. <laughs> <laughs> it's down. It's down. It's down. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to kind of put that out there, man. Uh, you know, young black quarterbacks getting their money. That's what's up. Um, we're going we're gonna to kind of transition from sports. We're going to get into uh, – Another sport, it's an Olympic sport this year, even though the Olympics are dead. Skateboarding. Yes. Man, fucking Nike, man. Just, they just saying, mm -hmm. hey, you want, you want SBs? We gonna, we gonna <laughs> oh, I know where you're going. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to keep churning out these SBs, man. We, uh, we had a, uh, a, a Euro release of the uh, Jordan 1, the JPEG uh, Chicago SBs. And uh, those are. I mean, oh shit! They're uh, they're very nice. Yeah, they're very very nice. Is is that gonna be exclusive to Europe? Don't tell me that. I believe it is exclusive to Europe, if oh. I'm correct. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Andrew, I'm gonna cry. The Chicago's, yeah, man, and, and um, I, you know, like I said, man, this this year has been uh, wow. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm like, so now we have that. We have the, uh, what's the lemon wash community? Mm -hmm. You mean the, the, the throwaway Travis SBs? <laughs> throwaway Travis SBs. 
Bro, these are literally the like another Travis that they were just like, all right, maybe we'll just give these to someone else. Oof. These aren't even SBs though. These are just regular dunks, aren't they? No, there's they SBs. don't have the fat they're top. SBs. No, they're SBs. Yeah. Oh. That they just probably did a weird lace job for that product shot, but uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, these are basically uh, Trav SBs 2.0, if you ask me. No, there's anything wrong with that. Just very similar. Very similar to a shoe that was very popular. <laughs> Aha. Yeah, it, it's very it definitely gives those Travis uh, scrap vibes. Now, like. Luke, just because we're back on SBs and SBs and ones sort of have been the like the new like the the, the year of SBs and just Jordan one in general, it's ridiculous. But you had an interesting comment before we hit record yes i said because lawrence wanted to talk about the biohacks and i said why because they're base uh with you know and he's like because we talk about jordan ones and that's just you know that's part of the show and i said that yeezys uh that jordans are basically just like yeezys now like yeezys are just like jordans because they're just constantly releasing out new new colorways uh and yeezy the reason why they're doing that is because they're trying to compete with yeezy because Yeezy constantly puts out these colorways. If you think about it, they're just it's it's all the same at this point. They're it's just who can get your money first. And sure, Jordan one maybe Jordan does it a little bit more consistently, but I think Yeezy is the competitor that forced them to put out as many models as they have. Hmm. Um Let's see. Let's see what we can. Let's see about that. Um, well, while you compile your thought, Lawrence, I do have a thought looking at these biohacks. Yeah. Uh, as far as colors for a one, this is a very Yeezy esque Jordan one. As far as the amount of colors and weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when Luke said that before, I was kind of like. And then like, you look at the mochas too. The mochas are, are just, are just Travis Scott ones. Well, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Chris, you said that this is like, this is basically a play on the undefeated uh, Yes, yes. Right. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say they're not, but the colorway of this is does sort of reminisce of what Yeezy does with his colors. Where he picks a palette and he starts working with it and then he beats it to the ground. Yeah. It's kind of, this might be too nerdy, but there's like a recolor feature in Illustrator and it seems uh-huh. like, yeah, he picked like, he, yeah, he like, he, it seems like with this Jordan one, they were just kind of like, all right, we'll move it. A, well, just the colors a little bit on the left. But I feel like that's what Yeezy does with all his shit. Right. I mean, he posts all those palettes online for everybody to use. So it's not mm-hmm. like they're not accessible. I'm not saying exactly. that he uses them, but I'm saying oh. he, they're kind of starting to follow the model based on this. I know you're saying it's the undefeated, but it's similar enough where I'm kind of like, oh, all right, I get, I get what Luke's saying. All right. Okay. Well, listen, I'll say this. Um, we, you know, we did have that, that stretch from, you know, 2013 to around 2017 where, you know, there, there weren't too many non OG colorways of Jordan ones. I will, I will agree with you on that where it was mm-hmm. kind of still, you know, they kept it, you know, Chicago's breads, Royals, shadows, you know, you did have some, you know, you did have some out there ones, Barons, you know, I, you know, I can, I don't know the exact list off the top of my head, but I, yeah, I will. I so it, it was kind of like yeah, we did keep it kind of limited, and we did kind of keep it OG colors. We did have some metallics thrown in, uh, and then Yeezy, you know, because obviously the Yeezy three fifties are you know starting from two thousand and fifteen. So, um, but I I will agree with you as the time went on. Yeah, we started getting more Yeezys like every week. So instead of like you said, where we got maybe two in twenty fifteen. We got, or you know, four in 2015. We got, you know, 15 in 2018. So I get what you're saying. Where mm-hmm. they're both amping up because they understand it is a cash cow. Yeah, and I think that's what it, I do agree with you on that. Okay. Um, but I, I'm not gonna compare Yeezys to a Jordan One, and I and I, I I'll continue to say that because I think there's just so much history behind a Jordan One. You know, it's it it is such a iconic sneaker. No, uh, for sure. It's got more history behind it, but I think that it's just uh, it's challenging. It's challenging that history by making uh, by making them put out more pairs and more more colorways just to keep up with the with the uh, not even I'm not going to say innovation because it's definitely not innovation. They're just putting a different palette on a 350, you know, 
But I think it's just like you when you're putting out that much manufacturing wise, who do you like? Kanye's literally trying to get everybody to wear Yeezy, put Yeezys on their feet. So to and the more feet that have Yeezys on them, the less feet have Jordans on them. So Jordan has become more of a let's just put out as many Jordan ones as possible so people remember the co- the classic silhouette because that silhouette is has more behind it. I'm so in the middle of the road between because I'm like with Lawrence, but then I'm also like hearing you, and I'm going like, okay, it's hard to kind of the timeline does make sense. If you really think about it, that's why mid, mids are selling out, man. Mids are selling out. That's because it's it's easy. It's because of easy. But I think I think it's all I think it's just because Nike is just they market it and they poured out ones, and the ones is probably the most wearable colorway or, or silhouette for for a lot of people right. so i think i i understand what you're saying i think yeezy's base is, is a little different than jordan one's base if, if that makes sense like a like the the core fan base of a jordan one is i think a, a different age category than the, the core of a yeezy 350 yeah just to kind of expound on that um while you said that i had the thought i know a lot of like one people like jordan one people but i don't know many yeezy people you know how like I'm saying there's a lot of people I know because no I know people. A lot of Yeezy. Yes. Okay, I know a lot of people that know Yeezy yeah. people. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. So like, right. you, you know, like you may have, you know, I, I always say this. I mean, you may have a younger high but school. That's the other thing is that this is the demographic that they're, that most companies cater to is the 18 to 35, mostly that 18 to 25 demo. So the, all the young kids, it's a fight for who's young, you know, which young kid whose money they get. Because they know they'll have a, a fan for life. So if I'm putting out, if Yeezy's putting out 16 models a year of a, of a 350, and Jordan's only putting out 12 models a year, and they're both just equally as hard to get at this point, where even retail, even resale is not that high anymore for, for Jordan 1s, where you could get, if you wanted a pair of Jordan 1s, you could have a pair of Jordan 1s in your hands. Uh, I mean, I think the one uh, resale is a little... <laughs> it's better. It's better. but I think it's better, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's it's it, it look, it look it's still 500 for like but if you look at like Yeezys are uh, if you go on the retail resale market Yeezy 350s are around three hundred dollars right yeah mm-hmm. they're like around retail Biohacks when they came out three hundred dollars if you look at the aftermarket it's about the same so it's about who's which young kid they could get their uh, whose kid they could get their money on first you somehow oh, oh. are both not wrong. Also, but I'm, but but here's the thing. I mean, and you're saying like the after you're comparing aftermarkets and stuff like that. But Yeezy have a higher price point than a Jordan One. That's true. That's true. And I'm not, but that doesn't mean anything. That what that means is that the seller. That's not. That's not up to me. That's up to the resellers, right? That's who. That's who's who's making the prices. They're saying that the value of a Jordan One is approximately the same as a Yeezy 350 that is coming out, and that that is the competition that they're in. I kind of disagree with you on that, man. I, I it's really, it's really funny because like I get what Lawrence is saying, but I also get what I you're saying, and, what I'm, Lawrence I'm, is saying. and I'm in the middle of your ages. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence, going, I don't know which side to pick. What age am I really? <laughs> <laughs> what age are you? <laughs> no, I hear exactly. But George, I hear exactly what Lawrence is saying. Lawrence is saying exactly. I understand a hundred percent what you're saying. That like there's there's a history behind it, and that there's just it's just uh, Jordan one. If anything, influence easy to do this because they're in competition with each other constantly. So I, I hear exactly what you're saying, but I just I just see it the other way. I'll agree to disagree with you on that. What I mean, what what cannot be argued, which I think uh-huh. all three of us will agree, is at the end of the day, the Jordan one will still be wear, worn twenty years from now. Where Yeezy, I'm not sure if that's going to stick. It's a, it's a toss up right now. No, I don't think I don't think it, it will be worn twenty years from now. Ooh. But I think I think listen that the Jordan one silhouette is something that can be worn, dressed up, dressed down. You know, it it's gonna pe- people that's their favorite basketball player. Right. You know, they have so many iconic memories with, with Michael Jordan. I think so. Obviously, that like you like Chris said, twenty years from now, I and mean, people are still going to be fucking with you See, know that's Jordan. That's crazy because I think people will still wear Yeezys now. Well, it, it, it is it is it's another a futuristic style. It is all right. So here's the thing. Yeah. Okay, the, the way this is okay. This is what we, this is a perfect example of what you're saying. Okay. Right. All right. Jordan ones have been around since 1985. Right. Yes. Right. And they have stood the time of, granted, you know, no, you know, 
to 94 when they retroed them. Obviously, retros weren't as big. But now we're looking at 35, 30, you know, 35 years, and they are still standing the time. Right. There are Yeezys that certain models of Yeezys that released four years ago or three years ago. And that people nobody wearing. No one also true. Them. Nobody wearing the moon boots anymore. Well, not, not, not only the moon boots, but how many times do you see a person wearing a 750? Yeezy. Or even turtle doves. True. Even you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or even if you want to get <laughs> well, that that's not far. fair. Turtle doves are $1,000. How many people do you see wearing $1,000 Nikes uh, around? Once they want, once fair. They want. I just mean that they, they, he switched the model and didn't yeah. turn back. That's what I'm saying. So that's like also the, true. The dad, the dad, uh, seven, the dad. Yeah, but you're talking about seven. silhouettes. I'm not talking about silhouettes. I'm talking about the production of it. I'm talking about the product. You're talking about now. We're talking about something different. I think because no, you, you literally just said you literally just said people are going to be wearing Yeezy three. Right. I didn't say three fifties. I said Yeezys. I didn't say three fifties. But it's true. You just said Yeezy brand. I said Yeezy. Your, your original argument is how the the three fifty is is the Jordan one. So if you're no, saying I'm not that, saying that the 350. Oh, that's where you're getting me wrong. I didn't say the 350 is the Jordan One. I'm saying the 350 is is a is the is the reason that we have so many Jordan Ones at this point. Oh, okay. Okay, I think I can clarify. You're not saying the 350 is a new Jordan. It's a new you're iconic. Saying, I'm saying the, that the Yeezy. The reason why we have like <clears throat> the, they're the same level of production at this point. Right. You're saying that Nike is trying to compensate for all the production that Yeezy is doing with ones on the most. Yes, because that's their biggest seller. Um, I I'm still in the middle of this here. I really I'm with you on both ends. (laughs) I mean, like you're both are so not wrong. (laughs) I get like I get Lawrence is like, I don't know. We're both at just a standstill. Well, I think this is I think this is what we should do. I think this is what we should do. I think um every I think we should just pay attention to this because it's worth noting. It's it's both both things we've said, like me talking shit about Adidas going down and you guys going over the one or the easy. I feel like there's something to this here because Adidas is mostly off the map, if you ask me. The only thing that they have is Adidas Yeezys. Right. Yeezys, with the amount of production they're doing, is comparable to what Nike's doing with some of these older models. But that's not true with Adidas just only having Yeezy. Like, they have, I mean, obviously, they, I think they rely on classic models and celebrity influence. Yes, of course. Now, I'm I'm just talking within this space, though. I'm not saying, like, they're running, they're basketball. I don't know none of that. Because, I mean, you drop a Beyonce, Beyonce Ivy Park thing, and that shit is going to fly, too. So, I think. Absolutely. I think Adidas, like, uh, granted, you know, obviously, it's not as, it's not as on the forefront as a Yeezy. But I think Adidas, they rely on their celebrity stuff. And then, like you said, this their classic and their, some of their technology. Because some people just prefer Ultra Boost or they prefer, you know, you understand what I'm saying? But I do know what you're saying, Chris, where it's just like Adidas is kind of like, yeah. and what innovation have you really had? Like what new stuff? I mean, they had the 4D stuff, right. but even the 4D stuff didn't take off the way because it came with the high price point where people were just like, I'm not paying $300 for this yeah it wasn't a cool enough soul like nike got it with the adapts they got it with they have cooler souls you know what i mean like that soul they you, you couldn't sell it there wasn't enough allure about it you know what i mean but if you um, team easy over here algae <laughs> shoes algae slides i do want to pay attention to this though this is because also with wax leaving like there's a bunch of shit that's worth noting throughout this whole conversation um mm-hmm. but i think we're kind of hitting the limit here so we got to wrap up um oh, shit. i think we're close yeah um, I do want to do a small plug by, uh, I got blessed, mm-hmm. um, but it's a cool enough thing. I want to show you guys, cause I knew about them a long time ago, but I didn't realize how, what the model was and how it worked. So this is brand called T post. Basically, uh, this dude hit me up and he's like, Hey, uh, I found you somehow. You seem legit. Do you want a shirt? It's a subscription base, but I'll give you the first month free. You seem legit. Like, That's great. I was, That's yeah. I mean, he, yeah. It's, he was like, yeah, you seem cool. Like, you want a shirt? And I was like, yeah. He, he emailed me, too. He didn't, like, DM me. It was, it like was weird. I just imagine him sweating right in this email. Just like, <laughs> I've, I've made some bad decisions. You seem like a good guy. Please take this shirt. Help me. So, and people outside of the U.S. might know this brand. I knew them, but only because A-Life did a collab, like, in 2015. But the brand's called T-Post. Basically, what they do, I'll hold it up. So, this uh, story, it's a literal article is printed on the inside of the shirt. So it's the inside back. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's got a full story. And basically, there's, like, some guy writes it, some guy lays it out, and then this guy will 
print it. And based on what the article is about, that determines what the front image is. Oh, shit. And he does this every month. He uh-huh. only makes the amount of shirts he has subscriptions. So basically, like, it's, uh, it's also in Euro. This Euro shit's been fucking me. I, I didn't mention the eBay store. I've also bought a pair of... Uh, I brought a pair of shoes off eBay trying to figure out the conversion rate, but then it just took it to the bunny out of my PayPal. <laughs> he said, buy it now. And then he was like, wait, we bought it right now. I was, no, I was like, I wanted to convert it now, convert it now. <laughs> I'm fucking 210 euros out of my fucking bank account because I wanted to convert and I didn't understand. You, you couldn't use fucking Google economy or whatever. I, do, I thought eBay had my back. It did not in that moment. <laughs> eBay, it's had my back in the past. They don't care about you. No, they do not. <laughs> Look, anyway, no, so it's cool. So this article, because I just really just want to, conceptually, this, this fucking shit is dope. The article itself in this shirt is about logistics on uh-huh. DVD, which is a movie about like, uh, like a, some shit getting produced in a plant, but the whole movie itself is 35 days long. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, think about that for a second. The movie's 35 days. I'm not saying hours. Wait, I'm, not, I'm, mean, I'm, I'm saying mean, 34 times 24. That's the how run long time? Is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so then the, you so meant just like the span of recording. Damn, no, the, the whole movie. Thirty five days. It's it's the longest movie. It has the Guinness record for longest movie. So the article on the inside is explaining what that's like and comparing it to uh like our twenty sec. What it said something like our the best Instagram videos are supposed to be twenty six seconds long because that's the amount of time we have, wow. like in our brain, like our attention span. Yeah, like that's the sweet spot. So then they're talking about like this re- movie that has fucking thirty five days of content so on the front it just says logistics on tvt that's it (laughs) (laughs) but this shit is yo solely based on the art not only the article inside the shirt that you could read you read the article and it tells you that your brain is stupid and you can only process things at 26 seconds at a time (laughs) then to then go all right here's a shirt for the longest movie ever made (laughs) yo this shit is sick what kind Um, of this is almost like an aristocratic joke at this point. You just Yo, it long as hell just for that. I and you know what, dude? I'm gonna tell you. So it's the the shirt is a little on the tight side for me. You know, okay. I like my XLs like baggy. Yeah. But the quality on the shirt is banging. So I just wanted yeah. to shout out to that guy. I forget his name, but he knows what's up. And <laughs> conceptually, this is the shit. I love this brand, and I'm gonna continue to subscribe to them as long as I have enough money to do it. It's like hell forty yeah. bucks a month. Hell yeah. So it's not even like that crazy of a tea price. Give us a promo code, guys. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to email him back and be like, okay, give promo us a code? promo code. Yeah. yeah. Throw us yeah. a promo code for a month at least or two. I don't know. Five, six. Give us a free one. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was that. And then um, cool. I don't know. You guys want to – do you have anything else before anyone you want to do a hypo seed or what's up? Uh, is there anything else? I think – I mean – I think we got everything. I mean, I'm going to start paying attention for Zion's signature shoe. There's no photos, but it got announced. He's going to get his own model. Right. Um, so shout out to him. That's great. Uh, Cardi B's and Balenciaga's new posters. Oh, she's super excited about that. Good for her. Yeah, she's very excited. And I'm excited for her. That's great. Her come-up story just keeps getting better. And then, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, other than that, like, I don't give a shit about anything, I don't think. Yeah, we can, we can cover the rest next week. Um, I will start us off here. <clears throat> um. These, uh, I think these are sky medals. That's what they're called. Yeah. So these Mizunos, I don't think Mizuno gets enough love in their casual sneaker game. Like yeah. I know they're like a real run, like they're a true running brand. Like those motherfuckers make some running shoes, mm-hmm. but their regular sneaker game, I think is so slept on. So I wanted to shout out these sky medals. Um, I originally was going to plug the Hannon collab, the Hannon shop collab. Yeah. But I realized that, like, that, that's the hype shoe. Why would I mention that shoe? It's the original shoe. I'm going to start trying to do, like, the original shoes of, like, these hype collab models. Because yeah. th- these are fucking – these are bangers. I like these a lot. Yeah, these are really nice. Uh, I, I've seen, like, Mizunos around, but, like, I don't know, man. Looking at this model, it's very nice. It's very clean. And, you know, what? I'm not going to say that there isn't a Nike shoe that's very similar. Mm-hmm. But what I will say, it's sometimes nice to not to have a check on your shoe. Yeah, sometimes it's nice. I agree. <clears throat> Yeah, Sky Medals. Um, Mizuno Sky Medals. Uh, do you have mine? Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, no, not those. Oh. Oh, I don't have yours. <laughs> oh, mine was the, mine was the, uh, the Onisuka Tigers. Oh, yeah, of course. I went with those. Uh, the Mexico 66s in that classic blue and red colorway. Um, yeah, I think, it, I think that's just a, 
I'm just going to, yeah, talk about it real quick. That's like a huge history shoe. Like, I, I decided to go for a history shoe this week. Uh, I don't think we would have Nike today if it wasn't for Onasuka. Because, uh, are you guys familiar with the story? Yeah, but you, you should say it for maybe some of the newer listeners. Sure. Or newer people. So basically what happened was uh, uh, Phil Knight, creator of Nike, uh, f- took a trip to Japan. When he was really young, he had a dream to sell sneakers. And then uh, he, uh, he went over to Onosuka and he said, hey, I want to sell these sneakers. And they were like, uh, oh, uh, w- what's your brand's name? And they called it Blue Ribbon at the time. And they sold uh, basically this colorway shoe. And they would sell it uh, across the West Coast. And then eventually uh they kind of just went their own separate ways and nike was born but uh blue ribbon shoes uh blue ribbon sports was the first uh version of like the distribution of nike so that's uh i think this shoe is like a lot of like today what we have today is because of uh, onasuka tiger and that label is just very clean and i like it a lot i like that yeah man shout out to chun lee Mm -hmm. shout out to chun lee (laughs) (laughs) um I guess I guess I'll go with the uh, Prada's America Cup uh, sneakers, the good old America Cups. Yo, Lawrence, be staying in this in this tax bracket of recommending <laughs> shoes that we cannot afford. Right, I love I like, it though. I I had a pair of these when I was young, like, and I remember. No, you did not. <laughs> Prada America's Cup, yeah, America Cup. I had them, yeah, I had them when I was in fucking college. I, I worked at the NBA store, and I remember spending my money to go back to school on fucking Prada's America. Yo, stuff. all right. So every time Lawrence talks about buying an expensive shoe, he always, at the time, worked at the NBA store. I do not know what you made at the NBA store, but bro, it was not he was enough to buy jerseys. these sneakers. He was back door in jerseys. I was, I was. I mean, I, I listen. I did some things that I'm not proud <laughs> of, but um, yeah, bro. I had, I had Prada America's Cup. Uh, like th- those are. Those back in the days were like so fucking hype, bro. I remember now, these. Yeah, of course. I mean, th- those were like the shit back Yo. in the day. Oh, and we, uh, we've made fun of our friend for having these, but we were all really jealous that he had them. Yeah, you know? bro, those were. Uh, those were. Uh, bro, I can't. You, I just can't imagine you standing in the NBA store with these. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I know I didn't wear I didn't wear them in the NBA store. I mean, no, I, I know, but you don't actually have to. In my brain, I'm imagining a younger Lawrence trying to sell a yeah. um a Kobe jersey wearing these. No, he leaves he leaves the sales floor and what he changes when he's leaving. And so oh, the these, are the, these are the, the these are the switch out. Yeah, these are the switch out. Switch outs. He puts the all black force ones aside and then he puts these on. <laughs> he puts those on and everybody goes, damn, look at this guy. I mean, you have, I mean, everyone was, a lot of dudes in Brooklyn was wearing uh, America's Cups. Uh, and, and I remember I got some good wears out of those, uh, those products. And, and uh, <laughs> dudes, you know, they, they, they was people's everyday wears, you know. And um, so I think, you know, they're, they're, they're heat. Uh, and I don't think, and people aren't really fucking with America's Cups like that anymore. But I actually would get a pair one day, possibly, just because they, they're like iconic. They really are. I mean, I missed this wave probably because I, I wasn't in Brooklyn. I was in Boston. Yeah. But, you know, when did these come out? Do you know what year? Oh, man. I mean, dudes is wearing those 2001, you know, 2002. I remember those back in the day. I don't you know, know the original date, but. You know, I don't know. Um, I don't have like all the, the nerdy shit about high end fashion sneakers. But like looking at these, they they got like that 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 roundish like natural vibe that a lot of people are going for now i mean going back to yeezy just for a second like that soul is something that i think kanye would mess with he probably pulled reference for this for some of his uh tooling so that's what's up Mm -hmm. um it is funny imagine you in the store i don't care what you say just wearing those i remember i remember getting them sneakers man i was so hyped i bought them (laughs) shits man listen listen i spent a lot of money on those sneakers man so um sneakers though but I guess that's it, guys. Uh, that's it for this week. Um, unless any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, I think the Jordan 1 will stand the test of time. Nobody's questioning that. I think it's a great silhouette. I think it's one of the best silhouettes of all time. I'm just going to say that, just so that we're all clear. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, that's it, guys. Uh, so you can follow us at Trevisus, at LZD325, at Not That Cheney, at Sub Podcast NYC on all social media accounts. Um, we have a Discord. Join that. That's our main hub for everyone to hang out and talk shit. Um, and then we also have a email and a phone number that you can text or voicemail. So just go to the Instagram. You can see that. 
That's about it, guys. Just Discord mostly. Come dr- kick it in the Discord. Yeah, come hang. We have not only um, our guests, all our guests basically are on there that have been on the show, so they kick it with us. Um, sneaker friends who work places. So any yeah. brands that we've sort of have talked about, some of the people are in there. Mm-hmm. And then um, and just like just other people that love sneakers. So just come through and hang out. Yeah, man. Pull up. Pull up. Um, and that's it, guys. That's it. Thank you for choosing Sup Podcast. Uh, my name is Lawrence. His name is Luke. And his name is Chris. Uh, have a wonderful day. All right. Peace out.